Welcome back to Sports Radio 95.9 The Fan. My name's Mark, and yes, this is the Mark Moses Show. Weekday afternoons from 3 to 6 p.m. And right now here on the Club 52 Hotline, a man I've known for a while, but now he's here in the state of Florida covering Florida State and the ACC for ESPN.com. His name is Jared Shanker. Jared, how you doing today? I'm doing great, and yeah, you're right. We've, uh, we've been talking to each other on the radio for a few years now. It's funny how it things work out and we're both down in the state of florida now yeah you're absolutely right and and i've known you because you used to cover big 10 big 10 recruiting midwest recruiting as well and you, you, we got to start there what is the biggest difference from what you saw with, with midwest recruiting and those teams going to the big 10 and now you're in florida w- with florida state national champions even florida as well what is the difference just that level of talent is just so much better absolutely i mean the the talent base is is so deep here in, in this the southeast region of the country. And, you know, the Big Ten teams, you see Michigan and you see Ohio State and a few others, um, you know, dip into the to Georgia and Florida, um, Virginia, and, you know, those states decently often. But, you know, they're only getting maybe three, four, five guys uh, each class from those states. But then SEC schools, Florida State, all the, all the schools down here, they're, they're kind of the opposite. They... Most of their classes built in the South East, and then they can pluck a few national guys from California, from or from the Midwest. So many more Midwest kids are are leaving the Big Ten and going to the SEC too, which which hurts that conference. But the talent base is is just so deep here that it, it's tough on on Big Ten schools to, to compete with the SEC. And um, there is there's a, there is such a rivalry between those two conferences that uh, the Big Ten just you know has a tough time regionally uh, competing with the SEC because of the, the talent base. Well, I know you were also like in you know Ohio State country with Urban Meyer, and you saw it the past two seasons, what he's trying to build there. Do you feel like he's still trying to bring that SEC feel to the Buckeyes, though, with recruiting? Oh, absolutely. And he's said that uh, several times that you know, he, he doesn't feel that Ohio State's at that Florida level yet, but, but he sees them, them growing there. He's He's recruited Georgia, especially the state of Georgia, very mm-hmm. well. He's recruited um, Florida very well. Nick Bosa is going to, or Joey Bosa, I'm sorry, Nick is his younger brother. Joey Bosa looks like he's going to be a phenom at Ohio State. Uh, they got a lot of good linebackers out of the, the state of Georgia. Raekwon McMillan, number one linebacker in the 2014 class, though. So he, he's building that roster like, like he did at Florida, and it, it's going to be a little tougher. He, he can't pluck every top guy from the southeast like he could when he was in Gainesville, but but he has an idea of what he wants his roster to look like, and and it's an SEC team, and he said he's not there yet, but given the way he's recruited, he could be there in another year, two years. We're here with Jared Shanker, ESPN.com. Now he covers, let's get to this, Florida State football for ESPN. you got to follow him on Twitter at Shanker ESPN. And, okay, you go down to Tallahassee. I know you started around signing day and not very long ago, and then you see the riches of what Jimbo Fisher has done. What is your thoughts, a guy who's new to the beat, what are your thoughts on Jimbo Fisher and, and the powerhouse he's now built there at Tallahassee? He, you know, he's a, a Nick Saban protege. He worked with him at LSU, and you can see that they both kind of have that no nonsense approach. They both do a lot of similar things. They both have, you know, what they call the process of of getting to this championship level and and sustaining it. And now, when I talked with Bobby Bowden recently before the the start of the spring practice, he said that, that that's the toughest thing when you're when you're building a championship program is to sustain that level of being a national contender every year. And, and he had obviously had those, um, you know, more than a decade of top, top five finishes. So he knows a little bit about what he's talking mm-hmm. about. And Jimbo Fisher, he has the uh, the program headed in that, in that same direction. They're going to be really good for a long time. Um, they lost a lot in on this from that 2013 team, but just a supremely talented roster. They're going to be competing for ACC titles and, and, uh, competing to be in that college football playoff just about every year. Well, one of the biggest off-season moves happening with this team after they won the national title, talking about the Knowles, is third defensive coordinator now in three seasons, but they at least, you know, just improved from within, just made Charles Kelly the defensive coordinator. What are your thoughts on that move, especially with you keep changing defense coordinators, but you're winning national titles? I mean, what are your thoughts on the move? 
Well, we're talking with, with Jimbo and talking with the players, they say this move is a lot easier than when they went from Stoops to Pruitt mm. between uh, 2012 and 2013 because they are promoting from within. They said Pruitt was kind of a an overhaul as far as scheme goes and what he wanted to do, but for the most part, Charles Kelly has kept everything pretty similar to what Pruitt ran. So as far as scheme-wise, there's probably not going to be too much of a difference. Obviously, that's going to that could change as as the game starts to, to mean something and they get out of spring practice and, and Kelly takes a look at how his personnel is actually shaping up. But, and speaking of the personnel, I think that's where you're going to see the biggest difference. They lost you know, arguably their best player at, at every every level of the defense. Timmy Jernigan on the defensive line, Kelvin Smith at linebacker, Marcus Joyner in the secondary. It's tough to replace those guys talent-wise. Maybe even tough to replace those guys leadership-wise, So. Florida State finished with that number one defense, scoring defense in the country last year. It's going to be tough to, to match that. As talented as they are on defense, you lose so much. You know, Charles Kelly has a, has a difficult task at hand in, uh, in his first year as a defensive coordinator. Well, Jared, I mean, look, you're there at spring practice every day up there in Tallahassee looking at this team. Is that the number one storyline uh, where everyone's looking at, okay, who's the next guy who can step up? Like you said, D-line, linebacker, safety. I mean, that's that's the heart of it right there. Is that the number one thing you're looking at? Yeah, I think so. They had their first scrimmage on Monday. Jimbo Fisher was, was none too pleased about how it went. Hmm. Uh, that's probably part trying to bring his team back down to earth a little bit. But, you know, you ask him just about every single position, and minus the DBs, he really didn't have much good to say about any position. He, he called the quarterbacks very average. He didn't have anything to say about the defensive line. He said the receivers, and they're trying to replace Kelvin Benjamin and Kenny Shaw. He said their receivers were really underwhelming. They need to start getting open. They need to even just work on catching the ball. And then, look, we were talking before on the defense. The defensive line has, has a lot of talent. I'm not sure how much of a need there is to worry when you have Mario Edwards and you have Eddie Goldman and, and so many other guys there. But linebackers, you know, they're dealing with a few early injuries in spring camp. They have, they have a lot of talent, but are they going to gel together? And the secondary looks like they're going to be okay, but one miscommunication in the secondary can lead to a 70-yard touchdown in a game that matters. And, and you know, you don't have Joyner back there kind of there to right the ship, so... There are a lot of questions on this team, as talented as they are. And games aren't aren't played on a piece of paper. No, you're absolutely right. We're here with Jared Shanker, Florida State beat reporter for ESPN.com. Give him a follow on Twitter at jshankerespn. All right, you went with some of the weaknesses there, so let's make sure our, our Florida State fans are happy with you still. Let's go to the strengths. Is it O-line and Jameis Winston and maybe the running backs? Could you make a case that that's probably the best strengths on this team? I would absolutely. I mean, anytime you 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 bring back the, the Heisman winner uh, quarterback like Jameis Winston, could end up being number one pick in 2015. You have to start there as as your number one strength. And you're right; they have you know he's bringing back four out of the five starters on the offensive line, and their new center has starting experience too. They're going to be really good on the offensive line. They should be really good on the offensive line. Carlos Williams comes back at running back. He's He's primed to have a really good season for them. I, I think that's where you have to start as far as where this team's biggest strengths are. And, and like I mentioned before, defensive back, Jalen Ramsey, P.J. Williams, they're, they're loaded in the secondary too. We're here with Jared Shanker, Florida State. I want to talk about Winston. I know he's playing baseball right now, but – can he get better on the football field? I mean, you, you like you said, you win a Heisman Trophy, you win a national title, but he was only a freshman. Can this guy put up better stats in 2014? I mean, is that what Florida State fans are expecting from this guy? It's going to be tough to put up better stats. Um, just when you look at the numbers, he did put up, but you know, this team might not be blowing out everybody like they did a year ago. And Winston might have to play a few fourth quarters, something he rarely had to do in 2013 so his numbers might end up being a little bit better but he's going to have to be better they lost a lot at receiver uh, like I said Kelvin Benjamin and Kenny Shaw those two guys aren't there Jimbo clearly unhappy with the progress his receivers have made this spring the running backs Carlos Williams should be really good but then there's some injury concerns behind him hmm. Mario Pender missed his first two seasons Brian Green is going to be out with the shoulder Dalvin Cook's out with the shoulder they're both supposed to be back by the time fall camp run, comes around, but anytime you have the guys guys nicked up, you, 
you never know how many of these players are, are prone to injury and if they can last you know, a full 15 games, if that's how far Florida State goes. So Winston is going to have to be better, not just statistically, but how he operates that offense. It's interesting. You wrote a recent article for ESPN about Florida State where you talk about the backup position behind Winston and who could maybe be the backup. What are your thoughts on some of the guys who could step up and become the backup quarterback for Florida State in 2014? Yeah, and, you know, I caught a little bit of flack for that article. And hmm. you know, I, I can see um, I can see some points. I mean, how many teams do you have a, have a great backup quarterback? You know, the, the number is limited. But if you look at where this team was last year as far as backups go and it's a complete 180. They had Clint Trickett, who had starting experience. They have Jacob Coker, Jacob Coker, I'm sorry, who can now be starting at Alabama. And now you're, you're left with Sean McGuire, who was probably number four out of that four-person quarterback race last spring. You have John Franklin, a, a quarterback that at this point might be a better runner than he is thrower, and a, a freshman that's going to be coming in in a summer that played in an offense that didn't really throw the ball all too well. Oh, I'm sorry, all too much. So there, there are definitely concerns if if Jameis Winston goes down and luckily for Florida State he stayed fully healthy the entire 2013 season. But he's playing two sports now. Obviously, it could be a freak injury. Um, quarterbacks are a position where you take a lot of hits. As good as that offensive line might be, um, the quarterbacks are a position where you get hit a lot. So you know there there should be a little bit of a concern as to who's backing up Jameis Winston. I think. Who's giving you flack for writing that article? None, none of these guys have played for Florida State. I, I agree with your article. What, what were they saying about you, man? I think it's just, you know, at this point in the spring, you know, it's hard to, you know, to already talk about who the backup quarterback is when you have somebody like James Winston. <laughs> I, 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 I get it. But, I mean, how often you, you see injuries happen at quarterback all the time. You know, yeah. Coaches would want to have that, that solid number two in. You know, I don't think Florida State has that right now. They could by the time fall comes around, but as of right now, I'm not sure how comfortable the program is with their with their quarterback depth. Jared, I just think of last week when we had Florida Florida State baseball and a brawl almost broke out, and Winston gets out. There's like, no, no, it's like get him back in the dugout. That's what I think about. There was probably a mini heart attack going through the football <laughs> offices when they saw the highlights. You're absolutely right. Jared Shanker, uh, Florida State B reporter for ESPN.com. You can give him a follow on Twitter at JShankerESPN. Hey, when, when's the spring game? I'm putting you on the spot. It's coming up, right? Uh, April 12th. They're, they're halfway through spring practice now. And it uh, should be interesting to see what, uh, you know, specifically how those receivers do in, uh, in the spring game. Good stuff. Jared, appreciate your time, and I hope I can get you on again. Absolutely, Mark.